Hey guys, this is Shaz and welcome back to the Ministry of Reviews. Today I will test a special product. This is a dash cam plus a CarPlay media adapter 2-in-1 device. In fact, it's actually 4-in-1 because it also has the wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto system. This is an amazing new product from the famous CarLinkit company. It has an open Android operating system so we can download any app from the Play Store, wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto systems. But the best feature is that it's actually a full HD 1080p dash cam with a wide angle lens and 1.6 aperture with loop recording function. Now let's first do the unboxing of this product and then I will take this out to my car, connect it and show you how it actually works. So keep watching guys. So this is all we get uh, inside the box. We've got a product manual. So very nice images and all the details on how to connect it. It's in English and Chinese. Then we have a very long cable to connect uh, the dash cam and uh, the USB plug in your car. This is a cable extender and this is a tool to install the wire. So because this is a dash cam and you have to uh, connect this cable with the dash cam and the USB, so you might have to do a bit of installation. You can do it yourself or you can take it to a car shop who will do it for you, but it's, it's not very difficult to do it yourself. And then finally, you have uh, this CarLinkit dash cam plus a CarPlay media adapter. It looks very nice. Uh, it's quite nice and compact. So you've got the, the lens here. This is a full HD uh, dash cam, 1.6 aperture. Um, and this lens actually moves as well and only moves up or down by 30 degrees. So you can adjust the view. Uh, this is the place you connect with the windscreen. So it's a double-sided tape. Um, and here are the connections. So you've got uh, the USB-C connection. This is the USB cable connection that goes into the USB plug of your car. Uh, then you have a SIM card slot here. And then finally, you have the TF card or the SD memory card slot here. That's it guys. So, you know, looks quite nice and decent. Now let me take this out and connect it uh, in my car and then we will test the performance of this CarLinkit dash cam CarPlay media adapter. All right guys, so I'm in my car and I've got the dash cam ready here. Now you can attach this on the windscreen here like this. It has a double sided tape so you can just attach it here and then adjust the front lens according to the view All right so I'm not attaching it in my car because my car already has a front camera but you can certainly just attach it here that would be good enough so once you attach this on the windscreen then you will need to do a little bit of wiring uh, now it comes with a very long uh, USB cable you need to connect one end of the cable with the dash cam and then you know use the tool given in the box to get this wire from the dash cam to the USB socket uh, in your car so that would require a little bit of work it's not very difficult you can do it yourself or you can take it to a car accessory shop and they'll probably do it in 10-15 minutes all right guys so now let me connect the dash cam with the USB plug in my car there you go and now in a few seconds we should be able to see the startup video and then the home page of uh, Android operating system so I'm also timing uh, to see how long does it take to start this device and get to the main home page all right so 18 seconds and the intro video starts all right, so that's about 24 seconds. So it took about 24 seconds for the device to start and get to the main home page. 
Okay, so this is the main home page of the Android operating system. Now you can change the, the layout, the, the look and feel as well. You can add a wallpaper and so on. Now let me give you a quick tour. On the left side, you've got time, connectivity, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, then three applications that were last used or the ones that are currently open. Then you have this recording sign. This is because the footage is actually getting recorded onto the SD memory card or the device internal storage. Okay, and then you've got these six dots at the bottom. This is basically the home page. Uh, now you've got these uh, pre-installed apps appearing on the main home page, but you can swipe to uh, left and see some other applications that are pre-installed on this as well. Now this device comes with 64 GB of internal storage and uh, an option of adding more storage through the SD memory card. So you can go to Play Store and add tons and tons of different applications. So you'll see a lot of pre-installed apps are available uh, and we will test uh, a few of them in the in the video today. All right, so in order to test the performance of this device, uh, what I will do in this video today is test some of the frequently used applications and functionality. So the first thing I'd like to check is actually the dash cam options. So basically we have to go to this load key app, click on it. All right, so this is the dash cam view. This is a dash cam app. Uh, so it's already recording. Um, that's why it's red. You can take pictures as well. Uh, you have the loop video so you can click on this and go and watch some of the recorded uh, videos. Uh, come back. Now this is a live uh, view. Uh, and then actually you can go to the settings and change some of the important settings. So you've got uh, the resolution. I've already set it up for 1080p. Uh, you can change uh, a timestamp uh, if it's already added. You can set up a recording time as well for the loop video file. I've set it to three minutes. Uh, you can change it to five or one. Um, then the frame rate, I've set it to the maximum, which is 30 frames per second. You have the mic recording option as well, uh, collision sensitivity options as well. So it's fully loaded. I must say there are so many options uh, with this dash cam uh, device and uh, and the resolution of the output is amazing. I, what I will do is uh, in the next few seconds, I will show you the actual footage that I'm getting uh, recorded on the dash cam, not the view from this camera, but the video file that is saved on the SD memory card. As you can see it's so nice, crystal clear and crisp. The colors are so nice. And the best thing is that you can easily make out the number plates of the cars around you. So I really love the dash cam on this device. All right, so in order to connect the device with the internet, you have two options. You can either add a data SIM card to the device or you can go and connect it with your mobile's personal hotspot, which I've already done. So you can see, you can go to Wi-Fi and you'll see it is connected with my personal hotspot here. All right, so we've tested the dash cam. Uh, now let's start testing some of the apps and the functionality of this CarPlay adapter. All right, so the first thing I would like to test is YouTube. Okay, let's uh, play this one. All right, so the video is playing uh, quite nicely on YouTube. Now let's see if we can get uh, 1080p, at least 1080p resolution on this video here. So we click on this, go to quality, um, and we can see it's already 1080p. And you can see the output, uh, the 1080p output on YouTube is very nice. It's very clear, very smooth, absolutely no lag um, in playing the video, no buffering at all. So YouTube is, uh, is playing quite nicely on this device. Now let's uh, test uh, Netflix. Let's go and find Netflix. Okay, let's play this video here. All right, so Netflix is playing fine. Uh, in fact, we can use the steering wheel controls to uh, control the volume. There you go. Let's uh, skip this. All right, so as you can see, Netflix is playing uh, quite nicely. No lag. Did you know? Skipping is also quite no fast uh, on this device. Yes. So I'm quite happy with the Netflix result on this device. 
All right, now let's test the live TV app, which is one of my favorite. Uh, here you go. Click on live TV. All right, so live TV seems to be working fine. Uh, now let's put this on full screen. As you can see, it's quite clear, uh, quite smooth, no lagging of any sort. Let's change the channel. All right, so this is Sky Cinemas. Uh, let's skip. All right, and we can control the volume through the steering wheel controls. All right, so live TV seems to be working fine. Uh, uh, again, the quality of the output is quite nice as well. All right, so now let's test the navigation. Um, I like the Waze navigation app. Let's test if it is working. There is a built-in GPS uh, on this device, so we don't need external GPS for this. So Waze is working. Let's uh, pick up a destination. Let's go to this uh, fuel station. We're all set. Drive safely. Turn right on street 12D. All right, so navigation seems to be working fine. Um, again, the screen is quite responsive. All right, so that's nice. Right, guys, so this is the layout of this uh, device. But if you don't like this, uh, there are several apps that changes the the look and feel and the layout of uh, of this uh, interface. So I've got one here. So let's click on this. Um, here you go. So this is a different uh, look and feel. This is a different layout. If you don't like the one which is the default uh, layout, you can uh, install you know these kind of applications that change the the layout for your uh, car. So friends, this is fully loaded with so many pre-installed apps, but you can always install other apps to test it. You know, I've got Prime Videos, Hulu, Disney Plus, Skygo, so many other apps, but I don't have the time to test all of them in this video today. Um, what I would do next is actually test the all important uh, wireless CarPlay option. So what I need to do is go to AutoKit. Next, what I need to do then is go to my iPhone, uh, click on Bluetooth, click on this option here and then find AutoKit T-Box appearing. Click on that, pair it, allow it to sync favorites and contacts. And then in a few seconds, we should be able to see the homepage of Apple CarPlay here. So this is the homepage of Apple CarPlay. All the apps that are compatible with Apple CarPlay are appearing here. So this is just a one-time setup. You just need to connect the device with your mobile's Bluetooth once. And then next time when you switch on the car, it directly takes you to the home page of uh, Apple CarPlay. Now, this device also has wireless Android Auto. I don't have my uh, Android mobile with me today, but you just need to follow exactly the same steps uh, to connect to uh, Android Auto. So on your Samsung mobile, go to Bluetooth, pair the device, and then you should be able to see the home page of Android Auto. Now with this device, you also have the video in motion uh, functionality, so you can uh, play video content while you're driving. Now, I do not recommend doing that. Even if you're doing it, you, uh, the driver should not watch that. It's quite dangerous, but just wanted to tell you that this device has the functionality of video in motion. So that's it guys, this was a quick review of this uh, latest CarLinkit Dashcam Plus CarPlay AI box. And I must say I'm very, very impressed with this device. I really like the output and the resolution we're getting on the Dashcam. All the different functions and features of Dashcam, the loop recording, I really love. Um, and, and when it comes to the CarPlay uh, Android system, amazing we've tested some of the important uh, functions apps everything worked really really well absolutely no issues it's quite stable there is no lag when you're playing videos so i highly recommend this device to anyone who's looking for either a dash cam or a carplay adapter this is kind of two in one so you get two systems for the price of one and uh, if you want to buy this just go to the link in the description of this video that takes you directly to the maker's official store where you can buy this really nice and amazing carlinkit dash cam carplay adapter